Before man traveled in space, energy from the sun was thought to be constant. Then, scientific instruments rising above the atmosphere recorded great shafts of energy flashing out from the sun, like beams from a lighthouse. Energy affecting communications and perhaps the weather on Earth. Small levels of pollution were considered unimportant until high altitude research showed that a few parts per billion of Freon could reduce protective ozone in the upper atmosphere. In space, we learned things which were obscured to us on Earth. But space research using one-shot rockets has been expensive and somewhat inflexible as scientists sat on Earth while astronauts worked their apparatus. Now there is a reusable space shuttle capable of making repeated trips into space. And there is a space laboratory which takes advantage of this economical transportation to and from orbit. It is called Space Lab. It fits in the shuttle payload bay and converts the shuttle into a versatile research center. Trips into orbit can be frequent. Scientific objectives can change for each mission. Scientists, not just career astronauts, can ride the shuttle and work in the lab. Space Lab is truly a new generation of research laboratory. In the early 70s, NASA began developing a national space transportation system. In Europe, ESA, the European Space Agency, was interested in collaborating. What major contribution could Europe make? Many possibilities were considered. Ultimately, Space Lab was selected. This laboratory would be versatile. It would be reusable. It would meet the demands of the international scientific community exclusively to do research in the broadest range of disciplines. It would have a pressurized room where the scientists themselves could work without cumbersome spacesuits. It would have platforms where instruments would be exposed directly to the airless, cloudless, low-gravity environment of space. Now a reality, Space Lab is a European development involving European industry in space technology. It was assembled in Bremen, Germany, from parts made in all participating ESA countries. Erno is the prime contractor. Because the space lab fits in the shuttle, NASA was also involved. Marshall Space Flight Center led the development for NASA and managed development of an access tunnel and support hardware and software for the lab. And because Space Lab is new, Marshall designed a series of test instruments to monitor the Space Lab's performance during the first two missions. Space Lab is versatile. It can be composed of any of several modular units which fit into the bay to meet the needs of a particular scientific mission. There is the pressurized laboratory, called a module, containing instrument racks, utilities, computers, workbenches, and controls for the conduct of research. There also are outside platforms, called pallets, for experiments which need direct exposure to space. This mix or match design makes the space lab able to accommodate a wide variety of scientific investigations. At mission's end, the pressurized modules and the pallets are fully or partly stripped of one set of experiments and new ones are installed for the upcoming mission. The laboratory module can hold more than five tons of experiment hardware. More than nine tons can be carried in the pallet-only configurations. As many as five scientists and science astronauts live in the shuttle orbiter along with a commander and pilot. They pass through a tunnel to go to work in the laboratory module. Pallet-only missions are operated from inside the orbiter. In every way possible, 
Space Lab minimizes the amount of modifications needed to take ground laboratory experiment equipment into space. The scientist or principal investigator can monitor his or her experiment from Earth. Voice, data, and video circuits will allow the investigator direct involvement during an experiment. Procedural changes based on observation can be passed up to the onboard science crew for execution. In some cases, changes can be made by the scientist from the ground. It's the next best thing to taking some 70 scientists into orbit. Opening those, I mean, there might be a little risk of implosion or something like that. Mission one, the maiden voyage. Its purpose, test the laboratory. Prove the thousands of electronic parts, pumps, fans, and valves, as well as the computers, which service the experiments. Demonstrate new research techniques developed specially for Space Lab. Conduct more than 70 investigations in nine days. It's a joint mission of NASA and the European Space Agency. Each agency has sponsored about half the payload. 11 European countries, Canada, Japan, and the U.S. have experiments on Space Lab 1. Scientific diversity is important on Mission 1. It tests the lab's ability to serve the full range of disciplines. Equally important is the expansion of man's scientific knowledge. Mission 1's experiments were selected for their scientific merit by international peer review panels from over 800 proposals. I want to welcome everybody to ALPA. It, it, it is always a pleasure for me. Once the experiments were selected, the investigators formed a cooperative body called the Investigators Working Group, or IWG. One of the group's tasks was to recommend which of the many scientists, only one from Europe and one from the United States, would fly the first mission. Two alternates also were selected. Called payload specialists, these career scientists would learn details of each experiment over the next four years. Dr. Ulf Meerbold of the Max Planck Institute in Stuttgart, Germany, and Dr. Byron Lichtenberg of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology were chosen as flight payload specialists. Dr. Wubo Ockels of the University of Groningen in the Netherlands, and Dr. Michael Lampton of the University of California at Berkeley are alternates. These payload specialists have learned the background, objectives, and procedures for each experiment. They have become personally acquainted with each principal investigator. They have become each scientist's representative in orbit. Okay. Mission One also has two scientists astronauts for NASA. Dr. Owen Garriott and Dr. Robert Parker. They are called mission specialists and are responsible for operating the systems of the laboratory itself and for coordination with shuttle pilots John Young and Brewster Shaw. They trained as much as possible with the payload specialists and would spend much of their time conducting experiments with them. What would it be like? This simulation at the Marshall Space Flight Center covers a 24-hour slice of the nine-day mission. Marshall is responsible for managing the early Space Lab mission. There is a new word that's important to Space Lab, the POC. It stands for Payload Operations Control Center. It does for the payload what Mission Control does for the shuttle. Mission Control and the POC are in the same building at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Mission Control handles the flying. Payload Control manages all scientific activities inside the space lab. You hear a lot about timelines around the POC. These detailed charts show graphically everything scheduled for each segment of the mission, which experiments are running what each crew member is doing, where the orbiter's pointing, and a host of other details, down to the second. 
The flight of Space Lab 1 may be the most intense week of space research ever. Behind the control consoles in the payload control center are several rooms where investigators set up the equipment necessary to monitor their experiments. Much of the time, Space Lab is in satellite contact with Earth. Through the direct voice, TV, and data links, investigators can analyze their results and, if necessary, extend their hands and minds 135 nautical miles right up to the laboratory bench. Dave, can you bring me up to date on the uh, status of the crystal growth experiment down at uh, Kennedy? All this activity wasn't orchestrated overnight. The mission manager has been responsible for planning and directing the Space Lab 1 mission. The mission manager and his team's prime goal is to ensure the Space Lab payload satisfies the research needs of the user scientists, that it uses the shuttle and Space Lab effectively, and that it operates well during flight. As the simulations draw to a close, the real thing begins. Clarity of observation lets us see the world in order to explain it. From orbit, we can see the universe without a veil of clouds. We can analyze phenomena without the bias of gravity. We can sample the complex forces and particles others thought to be empty space. As we move into orbit, our vision clears. Now we can go back again and again, learning from each flight experience, accumulating new knowledge. We have a new generation of orbiting laboratories. We have Space Lab.